Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be the last video of this video series of explainable AI for predictive maintenance. And in this video, we are going to talk about saliency maps or gradient based feature attribution. They're only specific to neural network, but you can apply it to any neural network. Let's say convolution neural network, LSTM, simple neural network. In this video, we are going to see a convolution neural network and how feature importance changes. So for convolution neural network, we need to give a two dimensional input. So what I did is uh, instead of giving it one sample, a single sample, so the, in this row, it belongs to a single sample. I give it a window length of sample. So I give a 20, I keep my window length to be 20 and I give it a 20 window length of sample and uh, my features are same. They are like 52 uh, features or sensor values that I have from 10 sh one data. I keep them intact. Just I give them 20 samples. So what I can see here is uh, the, the uh, heat map. This heat map is generated by saliency map and wh which signifies that for the prediction, for the output class, which particular values are important. So if we see here, the red value, like who has the highest importance, they, they are contributing the most for the output value. So this particular feature has the highest contribution throughout the time. And uh, yeah, and uh, the, here, uh, this particular feature have negative uh, impact on that particular class and so on and so forth. Now we'll understand what is saliency maps, how we can compute them, and then we'll see it on the uh, Jupyter notebook, how saliency map are calculated for the predictive maintenance of Tennessee Eastman process data. So first, let's see what is saliency map. So here we see there are some pictures and these pictures are got in, uh, you know, put into a deep neural network uh, like VGG16 ResNet and from their output, this explanation are created. So what does this mean is, uh, let's see, the, these are basically, so in saliency map, it uh, gives you an idea what each pixel in your input data is contributing to the you know output fault output uh, class of the neural network so if your output class is lion that that means you need to see that which part of your input data the neural network is looking at when it's saying okay this belongs to lion class and here is a example of a cheater model or a bad model so what happened this is a photo of a horse as you may know and the neural network was predicting perfectly this is a horse but when you give it like explanation like which feature you are looking at when you are seeing it's a, it's a horse it's looking at the watermark well it is confusing but the problem was when this particular neural network was trained most of the horse classes they had some kind of watermark so instead of looking at the horse it was looking at the uh, the watermark present to say okay this belongs to uh, you know the horse class so this kind of model will not perform good on the real you know on the real world so yeah this is an important way to check your models consistency so i i hope this was good enough for you to motivate that why saliency maps are important and uh, let's see how they work like how saliency maps works exactly so this is an example uh, this is basically a cat photo passed through a convolution neural network and it gives us some output Let's say we have only two output at the, um, you know, at the last layer, which are the probability of dog and probability of cat. So what we can say is this entire neural network, the convolution neural network can be termed as uh, a function f, which takes in this image input and it gives us the out, which is the probability of dog and probability of cat. So when you do back propagation, you take the output of this function with respect to the weights that you want to learn and along uh, and with iteratively you optimize your weight but when you are doing saliency maps when you are doing saliency map you take the you know the df of image with respect to the image not with respect to the weight and that gives you the saliency map the saliency maps are same size as your input data so you can superimpose the saliency map on top of the, you know, your original data and you see which features are important. So finally, you get something like this. 
so for this uh, dog breed uh, br you see that okay which uh, th this is the saliency map and then you put the saliency map on top of the you know actual uh, feature to see which feature you are, is it looking at yeah you can see this is for the hen this is for a barbell you know it's look it's putting focus on the main feature that uh, you know the it contributes as a barbell all right so okay now that we understand what are saliency map and how they work we can now implement them on uh, jupyter notebook to explain about uh, you know the fault classification algorithm so here is the jupyter notebook first we'll import the necessary libraries then i'll import the you know the fault uh, free training data and faulty training data from the tennessee eastman data set i'll concatenate them so now uh, this df data frame has both faulty and fault free data and i created one function this is a sliding window method what it does it it basically creates uh, it segments the entire data into small uh, small portion of sliding window so if i take window length to be 5 then this part will be my you know the input so this this is how it splits the entire data into small segments of window length which i can use for uh, in a convolutional neural network or lstm network so i am taking a window length of 20 and stride of 10 and i am creating my data frame here and my after doing this my x my input data has a shape like this 20 is the time time frame and 52 is the number of feature i have and i total 7000 samples after that i will scale my data first i'll uh, fit the standard scaler and then i'll use this uh, standard scaler to normalize my data I'll one hot encode the you know the y the y or the target value so that I can train the neural network. I'll do a train test split here. And now I will train my convolution neural network. For that I'm using a one-dimensional convolution neural network with 32 filters, 64 filter and 128 filters respectively. I'm flattening them. I'm using a dense layer with a, you know dropout. And I have a softmax layer at the output, and I'm, you know, the loss is categorically cross entropy, and the optimizer is added. So this is the whole structure. I have uh, 260,000 parameters to train, and this is the training process which is going on. And in the end, I'm getting, you know, on the training set an accuracy of 96% and a validation accuracy of 92%. This is pretty good. There is no not much overfitting going on here. And if you want to evaluate the model, so if you want to evaluate the model, you can see that you know some um, there is some confusion between fault class zero and fault class three. Except for that, all other kind of you know fault are well well classified. They are above ninety percent accuracy. And uh, yeah, finally on the overall data set, we have an accuracy of you know eighty nine percent. So after training, you can see it's way better classified after training. Each features are you know segregated into their respective classes before training it looked something like this each fault class like there is a lot of mixing of different fault classes but after training most of the faults are separated but there is difficulty between fault class 0 and fault class 3 because they are pretty similar okay now it's the important part now we'll create the saliency map for the cnn method and before we create saliency map one thing is important to know what is automatic differentiation it's nothing it's just the differentiation symbolically and then it puts the number in there this this is very important to create the to obtain the saliency map so we'll see a brief introduction to automatic differentiation so first we'll import the tensor flow and i want to you know create the uh, i want to get uh, so y is a variable which is x square and i want to get the differentiation of y with respect to x which should be 2x so for that what i want to do i want to create a variable so x equal to tf dot variable and uh, tensorflow variable and then i'm creating this with tf dot gradient tape as tape so what this does is it creates a computational graph so now it keeps a watch on x it sees that okay x is what i am watching x square equal to y so i know what is the value of y. and when you want to obtain dy by dx you can do this dy by dx equal to tape tape dot gradient y with respect to x and uh, when you run this you get 6 why 6 because uh, 
y equal to x square and dy by dy dy by dx equal to 2x and x value is 3 so 2 into 3 is 6 that's simple and uh, another way uh, because in neural network there are uh, would take differentiation of one layer with respect to another uh, another example can be you can create first to create a constant tf dot constant and all the only the tf dot variable are watched by that uh, gradient tip so when you want to watch or when you want to create back propagation with respect to some kind of constant you need to write this tape dot watch and mention which variable you want to watch all right so now we'll perform automatic differentiation on the convolutional neural network and to find the saliency maps before we do automatic differentiation it's important to put the last layer like to delete the software activation present in the last layer that's why i'm just putting you know the activation to be not because the softmax activation uh, exaggerates the uh, value of the output layer that's why it's important to delete that yeah now now i come to the main part this is the main part of the saliency map so we do the same as tf the gradient tape is tape and i create a tensor because this gradient tape only you know looks for the for the tensor flow variables so i convert my uh, the test data that i want to do i want to seek the explanation for x test zero so as uh, my uh, you know the model takes uh, input as uh, four dimension and x test has only three dimension so i need to expand this 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 expanded dimension refers to the batch of input then i'm converting it to a tensor so the name i'm uh, giving it is tensor input then i'm saying tape dot watch i'm i'm explicitly specifying that watch this particular tensor then i'm putting that tensor through my model to get the pred the predictions and i want to find the maximum of the prediction tf dot arc max and this channel will give the you know the the place of the maximum prediction so if i do uh, channel dot class if i run this one i get 129 if you do pred what are the pred here the pred are just the you know the logits the logits of the last layer so we can see here that yeah this 129 is what assigned here which is the maximum uh, you know the maximum value of activation all right so now what we get we we put our uh, you know the input value the with our we put our input sample to the model and we get the prediction and now it's time to cre create the differentiation of this uh, uh, prediction with respect to our input for that what we are going to do i are going to do tape dot gradient the class channel is my uh, output activation of the you know the highest probable class this 129 is my predicted class basically which is the basically the highest value with respect to the input tensor input what was tensor input tensor input was my uh, you know the tensored the tensor form of my input in numpy format all right so it will basically create the gradient and that is shape in grid if you see the shape of the gradient it's same as my input just there is an extra dimension one the 2052 is the shape of my you know the input tensor as well after that i do tf dot squeeze grads what this does is it basically takes out this extra dimension and now the heat map has a shape of 20 plus 52 then i'm doing a normalization of all the values of the uh, you know the heat map this heat map is uh, all the features so that you know it is easy to look at i'm converting it to numpy from tensor to i'm converting into a numpy array and then i'm using plt dot math show to visualize this and this is how the you know the neural network looks like neural network so now from this heat map we can see that which part of the input the neural network is looking at for that particular prediction from this example we can see that the you know the uh, 49th feature has highest importance but for that i i put all the all the code that we just saw in one place so that we can do it for various feature this idx takes the id of the you know the uh, whichever sample you want to explain 
why pred gets me the actual uh, what is the actual value of that prediction and then i am doing the same whatever we did previously i am first uh, uh, converting the last layer activation then the gradient tape then i am uh, you know obtaining the uh, differentiation of uh, the activated class with respect to the input i am creating a heat map i am normalizing the heat map and uh, converting it to a numpy array and then plotting it so for the idx 522 let's run it the actual fault is 13 and in actual fault my model is looking at the 49th feature that means the third feature from the last uh, it's giving most importance there so let's go and see so this this is the plot for the you know the fault number 13 this fault number 13 i put the fault number 13 on top of the normal fault so we we can see which feature are the most uh, contributing let's go and see the third feature from the last yeah 1 2 3 so this feature the model is giving highest importance to and we can see clearly that well uh, this feature is deviating the most from the normal class for this fault class 30 well so that was it for this video we can we can just change this if you if you don't want to use 512 you can change this and now for a fault class 19 okay different faults are activated for a fault 3 yeah the different classes are activated and like like that it goes on for because it's choosing randomly for fault number 10 the you know the feature the 16th or 17th feature has the highest contribution now if i run this one it will take the predicted uh, output class only so that we can visualize it clearly so i it will it will now plot the fault 10 on top of the normal fault condition so that we can visualize the 17th feature yeah so let's go and see the 17th feature yeah 17th or 18th feature so here you can see the 18th feature has the highest uh, you know de deviates uh, very clearly from the normal fault class and it's uh, you know logical for this particular uh, algorithm to give highest importance to the 18th feature i'm saying it 18 because uh, that it starts from 0 but here my features start from xma1 so that's all all right okay so that was it for this video and uh, this is the end of this uh, particular video series on explainable machine learning i hope you get to learn a lot of new things and you can implement them right away all the course will be available in the github which you can you know download and uh, maybe uh, run for your application modified for your application Yeah and I have to see you in the next uh, video series